Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. I woke up with the realization that it was not only Wednesday, but it's December 20th. Can you believe it, Sarah? Five days away. Yep, here we go. All right, the countdown is on Mike Osterhage. Hey, but not really feeling very holiday weather out there. No, not at all. And if you are uh, by chance hitting the road this morning, you want to watch it in a couple of spots because we do have some fog and I'll tell you more on that in a second. 51 degrees uh, dew point is at 50, so the relative humidity is well up there in the upper 90s. And then when you don't have any wind to speak of, we've got uh, some clear skies right now. Those are all the ingredients in place for some fog. It is going to be yeah, not feeling like Christmas at all. Once again today with a high temperature up to 70. Now, as far as the aquifer, yesterday's reading did drop down a little bit, two tenths of a foot. Mountain cedar did come down, still on the high side. Mold is low. Check out some of the uh, visibilities around the area right now. New Braunfels just last hour was down to three quarters of a mile, so it has obviously improved. Uh, Bernie has also improved ever so slightly at a drop down. Castroville is still hovering at five miles. Now starting to see hints of fog around Randolph as well as Port SA. So early in the morning right now, uh, we've got a lot more morning to go and therefore a lot more opportunities for this fog to tend to thicken up and that's going to be the case as we approach sunrise and just after that 47 right now over there at Rio Medina that is the cool spot on the map everybody's well up into the 50s and of course these dew points as expected did definitely come up overnight a lot more humidity out there and again with that very light wind all the ingredients are in place for some of this fog to form up so we're going to keep this around throughout the rest of the morning 65 at noon. Most of the cloudy skies today, 70 high temperature wind out of the southeast. Probably going to do this all over again tomorrow as well with some mist and a little bit of fog around the area. Then we have some rain chances moving on in here. We'll tell you about that all the way through the weekend and the Christmas forecast has changed somewhat from the last time we spoke. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, good morning, sir. Anything going on on the roads? Yeah, Mike, uh, things looking pretty good out there, despite, as you mentioned, some fog in our area as Trans Guy kind of adjusts this camera here at I-35 southbound at <laughs> Topper Wine. Uh, this is actually one of the spots that we're seeing right now. So this is real time. Look at them moving this camera out there on the northeast side. Uh, so this is some ongoing construction we've seen in this area throughout uh, most of our morning. We did have an incident earlier there by 151 in Callahan. That is uh, cleared out. Uh, that was early, earlier this morning, so nothing to worry about as far as our drivers out there. Um, again, some ongoing construction issues. Let's zoom into that uh, Topper Wine construction right now. Take a look here. Not affecting traffic. We just saw traffic kind of moving through in that area right there. But again, southbound lanes there on the, uh, on the northeast side if you're headed south from the Live Oak area. I do want to mention this because something that we were talking about yesterday morning, uh, there is emergency road work that is still ongoing there, I-10 eastbound at Cibolo Creek. So this is going to be uh, right there, a little bit east of FM 2538. So if you're headed out to Seguin later on today, this is supposed to be an ongoing issue that's going on. They were supposed to do daily construction there till 5 a.m. throughout the rest of the week, but I uh, got off the phone with Transgut a little while ago and they said that uh, for whatever reason, now this has become an emergency road work situation, and now this is going to be an ongoing situation there for drivers heading east on I-10 towards the game. But right now, everything else looking pretty good, with the exception of that uh, construction there at 35. And topper one, Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting that at first rescue crews thought was a major crash. Happened around 1.30 this morning on Highway 151 near Callahan. When firefighters got there, they found a man on the ground and thought he'd been hit by a car. While performing CPR, fire crews found bullet holes in the man's back. Police said the man was pronounced dead at the scene. So far, there is no suspect information. Well, today marks two years since Lena Kill was reported missing. Police say she was last seen at a playground at the Villas de Cabo apartment complex. That's in the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road. Advocates for Kill family believe someone has the key piece of information that could bring Lena home. San Antonio police and the FBI say they're looking for any clues. If you have any information that could help, call police. That number at 210-224-STOP. Today, friends and family are hosting a second observance of Lena's disappearance. It starts at 11 o'clock this morning at the American Muslim Community Center. That's at 4139 Gardendale.
We are now seeing what happened moments before police in Austin arrested Shane James Jr. Investigators say he killed his own parents at their East Bear County home earlier this month, then drove to Austin and killed at least four other people. Right now, James is in the Travis County Jail on a number of charges, including two counts of capital murder. Austin police released the body camera video. I'm hit! I'm hit! APD says an Austin police detective was shot multiple times, but he did not have life-threatening injuries. And here's a different angle from another officer's body cam. This one picks up the moment after the detective was shot. You see a couple of officers taking cover behind a vehicle. APD says James was not hit by gunfire and left that scene in a stolen vehicle. Officer arrested him less than 20 minutes later after a short chase. Well, now to a decision by the Colorado Supreme Court that could impact Donald Trump's 2024 presidential campaign. The court ruled that the U.S. Constitution's insurrection clause deems Trump ineligible to appear on the state's primary ballot because of his alleged role in the January 6th Capitol riot. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, the Trump campaign has called the decision completely flawed and is promising a fight. This morning, the Trump campaign fighting an historic decision. The Colorado Supreme Court ruling the U.S. Constitution's insurrection clause bars the former president from appearing on the state's ballot. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just the Republican frontrunner at an Iowa rally not mentioning the ruling. Trump has already faced 14th Amendment lawsuits in several other states. This is the first time he's lost, and also the first time the 14th Amendment has been used to disqualify a presidential candidate. That clause bars a candidate from holding office if they took an oath to support the Constitution, but then engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. The lower court in Colorado finding Trump engaged in an insurrection, but stopped short of applying the clause's definition of a U.S. officer to the president of the United States. In a four to three decision, the Colorado Supreme Court reversing that decision. One of the three dissenting justices writing, the majority's opinion flies in the face of the due process doctrine. The Trump campaign saying it's appealing the decision to the U.S. Supreme Court, but the high court's ruling may not have a nationwide impact. The Colorado Supreme Court stayed its decision until January 4th or when the Supreme Court rules. State election officials say the issue must be settled by January 5th, the ballot printing deadline. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Southwest Airlines and the union representing the airline's pilots have reached a preliminary agreement on a new contract. A spokesperson says the contract is worth $12 billion. The union's 25-member board will evaluate the deal today to determine whether to officially okay the tentative agreement. Word of the deal comes days after the Department of Transportation announced it would fine Southwest $140 million. That's for last year's 10-day-long holiday meltdown that stranded more than 2 million travelers. The next step would be for the union's nearly 11,000 members to vote on the deal. Great news for people hitting the roads this week. Locally, gas prices have dropped 25 cents in the last month. The average price for a gallon of regular gas, $2.58 a gallon here in Bear County. Statewide, the average cost of gas is just one cent more expensive than the local average, $2.59, while the average price in the U.S. remains well above the price here at $3.08 a gallon. Well, if you're traveling by air, here's a look at FlightAware's misery travel map right now. Not too many delays at the moment. A lot of people are leaving the San Antonio area, particularly tomorrow with the military exodus out of Military City, USA. So we're going to have a crew out there at the airport tomorrow tracking that. We will be keeping you updated on any problems this morning. But so far, so good. Looks like the bulk of the rain will affect the West Coast again this morning. The UTSA Roadrunners waking up with a big bowl game win this morning. Head coach Jeff Trailer getting doused with coffee. It was the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl after all. UTSA rallied from a 14-0 deficit last night to beat the Marshall Thundering Herd 35-17 for the Roadrunners' very first bowl victory. 
Retro freshman Owen McCown recovered from a shaky start to his first start of the year to complete 22 of 31 passes for 251 yards and two touchdowns. Robert Henry had touchdown runs of three yards and one yard, and Rocco Griffin won for 17 yards for UTSA. Roadrunners lost their previous four bowl games, so that made the coffee bath at the end even more sweet for Coach Trailer. They won two conference championships. They won a bowl. They were all also eligible. They were also uh, all here tonight. I mean, that's just, people don't understand what that does for a program. For anything nowadays, for somebody to finish what they started, doesn't happen very much. UTSA also managed to win without senior quarterback Frank Harris, who was declared out about an hour before kickoff because of a shoulder injury. Our San Antonio Spurs tipped off their road trip in Milwaukee last night without Wemby because of right ankle soreness. So Zach Collins got the start at center. First quarter, Collins started off the scoring with a 14-footer for a 2-0 Spurs lead. However, after that, the Bucks really took off. Damian Lillard making some history on this layup, becoming the 51st player in NBA history to score 20,000 points. Bucks were up 72-59 at halftime. Early third quarter, Spurs trying to mount a comeback against the second best team in the East. Jeremy Sohan down low, passes the ball out to Collins for the three. It's good, and the Spurs are down 10. Moments later, Spurs ball, Sohan drives in, gets denied, but Keldon Johnson is there to clean it up. The Spurs are within eight points. The Bucks restore order behind Damian Lillard from downtown. Nothing but net. The Bucks go up by 17. Spurs lose 132-119. KJ led the Spurs with 28 points. Spurs will make a trip to Chicago to face the Bulls tomorrow night as they continue their three-game road trip. Oh, go Spurs. Girl. Hey, was that coffee iced or hot? That's because, what I want to know. Yeah, we'll never know, or will we? Right now, 5'11", 52 degrees. Up next, how Apple's satellite roadside assistant feature on iPhone 14 and 15 now works a little better. And imagine you booked in a nice cruise to a tropical location like the Bahamas only be rerouted to a cold and rainy destination for your entire trip. Up next, why a Bahama cruise bound ship reversed to as we said a colder location and your rights as a passenger. 52 degrees at 512 this morning, some patchy fog and some parts of our viewing area. Will we see a little bit more rain throughout the day? And what will our Christmas Day forecast look like? Mike will have all those answers when we come back. Passengers are speaking out after their Bahamas cruise was rerouted to a rainy and cold destination. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details in today's GMA First Look. That is crazy. In this morning's GMA first look, cruise ship chaos. I was devastated. So this was um some of my kids' Christmas gifts. It's cold, cold light. Like wind blowing, cold light. Like officially cold. A cruise ship that was bound for the Bahamas reversed to rainy Boston headed to Canada. And this morning, some of those disappointed passengers are speaking out to GMA. It's a little depressing because yes. you can imagine us, we're making the most of it, but yes. most people are walking around in coats, gloves, and hats. We are in Boston, Massachusetts at the Cambridge Mall. So these are the great views that we have. You really have to roll with the punches and think about what's going to be best overall. So can a cruise line change your itinerary without consequences? Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this story and your passenger rights. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Just about 517, 52 degrees. Up next, we'll show you how Microsoft's Copilot can now make cute little songs on demand. And checking Transguide right now. Looking pretty good here in town, but Mike says we do have a little bit of fog and maybe mist in a couple of spots in our wide viewing area. There it's looking a little bit foggier at 281 in Encio, Reed, Rio. We'll be right back. Take the time to melt into your holiday moments with Lindor. <laughs> Irresistibly smooth chocolate from the Lindt Master Chocolatier. 
With Nurtec ODT, I can treat a migraine when it strikes and prevent migraine attacks all in one. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. Allergic reactions can occur even days after using. Most common side effects were nausea, indigestion, and stomach pain. Ask about Nurtec ODT. Dwight was a 13-year-old kid with cancer when he came to St. Jude. This kid is now 73 years old. That's what we do at St. Jude. Give thanks for the healthy kids in your life and join us to make a difference that could last a lifetime. Okay, 520, what's going on on the roads, RJ? Yeah, guys, things uh, starting off a little bit slow on the roads, but I do have a very important update. Uh, we're talking about Jeff Trailer getting that coffee bath. That oh, was yeah. iced coffee. Okay, so, iced okay. coffee. Okay. Any questions about this? Yeah. Hot right. coffee would be a little, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit cool up. They didn't have the cream and sugar, though, that he was talking about. Ooh, I'm not sure about I'm that. Not. We'll continue to follow this <laughs> very important story. Yeah. Yeah. Wooden stir <laughs> stuck to his forehead this morning. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to know where that coffee went. But anyways, um, all right, taking a look at Trans Guide right now. As we mentioned, uh, as far as the inner city, things looking pretty good right now. Taking you outside with Loop uh, 410 at 281 right there. Traffic moving pretty good in both directions. 90 at couples same situation here as well of course uh, you know most school districts are now out uh, for holiday break so uh, a lot of the kiddos gonna be staying at home maybe some people getting a little bit of late start on their Wednesday morning one thing to let you know about uh, we mentioned everything looking pretty good but I uh, do want to let you know about some ongoing construction taking place here on the near northeast side this is going on there at the northbound lanes of I-35 at loop 410 so uh, something that has been kind of uh, leftover construction from the overnight hours but again no major accidents right now no major uh, stalled vehicles causing any sort of delays we do also have construction here 35 at topper wine you can see that traffic is getting through that area a little bit slow going but for the most part our drivers are still good in that area there as well all right mike we know that there was some fog in our area, expecting to see maybe some of that thicken a little bit later. So how are things looking outside right now? Well, yeah, again, it depends on where you are as of right now, because in some places there is fog, some places nothing yet. We'll get to that in just a moment. First of all, sunset yesterday was absolutely spectacular. We had a few of those clouds uh, hanging around here, and that's going to be the situation again today. Before we talk about the fog, if you're doing any traveling today, not bad. Obviously, that, that storm system there off the, the west coast, but elsewhere around the country and a lot of the big hubs where a lot of the flights go through, if you're doing any flying, not too bad. We are going to have some clouds hanging around here this morning. Say if you're hitting the road and you want to watch out for a little bit of that mist and drizzle. And then tomorrow, if you are, say, driving up uh, to the north, up around Dallas, you may run into a little bit of rain, some of that scattered rain around there. That will continue into the, the Mid-South and up around the Great Lakes on Friday. So uh, any flights around there. And we'll also have a little bit of rain around our area if you're going to be driving on Friday. And then Saturday, not bad. By the afternoon, we will have more uh, showers around here. But again, a lot of the bigger hubs, now not including the West, out there around Denver, they're going to be getting some, uh, some weather by Saturday. But for the next couple of days, Traveling's not looking too bad. This picture, uh, you were just asking RJ, what's it look like out there? Well, it depends on where you are. Over there by uh, 10 at 410, not bad. Casterville, two and a half miles visibility. Bernie has dropped down again. New Braunfels is back up. And then hints of it there around uh, Port S.A. Pleasanton, a little bit of fog. Temperatures very, very mild. We are 10 degrees above normal on average. And then the humidity came up. So these numbers, dew point temperatures, Kind of measure moisture in the atmosphere are almost neck and neck with the air temperatures that combined with a little bit of uh, wind or no wind that's giving us some fog the ingredients for fog and as far as the dew points as expected they came up 10 15 close to 20 degrees higher than what it was yesterday and that moisture is just going to continue to pump on in here throughout the day as well as overnight so probably going to be doing the same thing again tomorrow as far as that chance for some fog as well as mist. So that's going to be sticking around throughout the morning hours. We'll make it up to 65 above normal at noon and 70 topping off later on today. And as far as rain tomorrow, we'll have mist and fog in the morning. This model is not real bullish with the rain. We'll have some scattered showers, especially late in the day and then especially going into tomorrow evening. That will carry over into Friday and Friday will be a little bit better chance for some rain overnight into Friday. Of course, uh, winter officially begins tomorrow night. 
right around 930 in the evening. A few showers around on Saturday, Sunday. The change really is the front, which is going to move on through here. Not a real strong one, but that's going to push the rain on out of here. I'm going rain free on Christmas Day, and we will have more sunshine around here. Just about normal temperatures once we get into Monday and Tuesday. A whole lot more after this. Stick around. Apple's iPhone satellite roadside assistance feature now works with Verizon roadside assistance. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Verizon users can now turn to Apple's satellite connection if they have car trouble. Apple's satellite roadside assistance feature on the iPhone 14 and 15 now works with Verizon roadside assistance. So if you can text for help, even if you're off the grid with no cell service or Wi-Fi. Samsung's self-repair program is expanding. The company has added foldable phones to the menu, joining the entire S23 series and other devices. No word yet on pricing. Self-repair is also expanding to four European countries. Finally, the Microsoft chatbot Copilot has a new feature that creates songs after a user enters a short description. It's done through a new partnership with an artificial intelligence-based music platform. The personalized songs come with complete lyrics, or they can also be instrumental. Those are your Tech Bytes. I'm Rhiannon Alley. Have a great day. 528 and 52 degrees. Immigration rights groups pushing back after Governor Abbott signed new immigration enforcement bills into law. Up next, how the Bear County Sheriff is reacting when it comes to enforcement. RSV cases in children are being seen a lot this holiday season. So what do you need to do to make sure your child is healthy? That's ahead at GMSA at 6 a.m. Good morning, everybody. 531 on your Wednesday, December 20th. Five days away. I know. Lots That's... to do in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's done? You done yet shopping? Oh, man. Uh, I'm almost done. I got a lot done yesterday, so oh I got to give myself a pound of that. How'd you buy it? Wow. Well, you know, I, I'm a procrastinator, honestly. <laughs> You don't seem like a procrastinator. <laughs> no, 100% you know, a procrastinator. Yeah. We yeah. got family coming into town, so I'm waiting. To oh. <laughs> I thought he was still trying to find the perfect gift for all of us. So if you are heading out early this morning, uh, if you have to go to work, maybe, well, stores aren't open yet, but you're going to run into some fog in places. Now, not over here on the northwest side. You can see we do have just a smattering of some clouds. Temperature stands at 50 degrees, dew point at 49. So when those two numbers are neck and neck like that, a little bit of a breeze or no wind. That's the great ingredients to get some fog to develop. Also, since you have such relatively high humidity, uh, it's that dampish chill out there this morning. Visibility is at one and a quarter mile up the road at Bernie, two and a half Castroville, five now Pleasanton. Hints of it around town. Starting to see just a hint of it out there by the airport as of right now. Uvalde has a little bit of fog as well as New Braunfels. And as is always the case, it goes back and forth. Just about an hour and a half ago, visibility was less than a mile at New Braunfels, so it has obviously come up, but this is going to be fluctuating and going back and forth with visibility getting worse at times, better at times all morning long. Everybody's in the uh, low 50s right now, with the exception right there over in Medina County, Hondo, Castroville, Rio Medina in the upper 40s. 65 today at noon, 70 at 5 o'clock, and we are going to continue with some of this fog and even a little bit of mist throughout the rest of the morning into about mid-morning. Then tonight, there's a chance for a couple little light showers around the area, and that will kind of develop into a few more throughout the day tomorrow. We're going to be dealing with some more mist and fog tomorrow. Then better rain chances going in through the weekend. And I think you're going to like the Christmas Day forecast. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, any problems out there with uh, some of this uh, low clouds and mist maybe? Not yet, Mike. Yeah, things looking pretty good out there for our drivers. If you are headed out right now around the city of San Antonio, one look at Transguide here at 37 Hackberry, you see traffic moving pretty good in both directions there. So we get one more in there. 410 and uh, Blanco Road, traffic moving pretty good there as well. Again, the rest of the city moving pretty smooth right now. We do have a little bit of lingering delays here over in the Live Oak area. So this is Pat Booker headed it to over 235 and 1604. Um, not seeing anything being reported by text out right now, but still something that uh, our drivers in this area may just need to be aware of. There is ongoing construction there at Topper Wine Road, so maybe some drivers finding some other avenues around some of that ongoing construction there at Topper Wine and 35. Uh, do want to let you know about a major uh, emergency road work that's 
been taking place over the past 24 hours or so. We're looking at the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Cibolo Creek. So this is going to be east of 1518 in east of uh, 2538 there. So again, the uh, they have crews there working on one of the bridges there at I-10, but um, this is now going to be some emergency road work. So at least one of the main lanes is blocked right now, and we are seeing a little bit of uh, lingering delays there from this. Expect this to get a little bit busier there. People headed out of town into the Seguin area. So that's a little bit outside of the major part of San Antonio. I-35 near Brown Falls traffic moving pretty good there. 37 at Houston as well. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. This morning, immigration rights groups are pushing back after Governor Greg Abbott signed Senate Bills 3 and 4 into law. Senate Bill 4 gives local law enforcement, along with Southern Border, along with the southern, southern border, the power to arrest anybody they catch entering the U.S. illegally. The ACLU and other organizations have now filed a lawsuit suing Texas and Governor Abbott over SB4, which they say is unconstitutional. Of course, putting Senate Bill 4 into action will fall to law enforcement, so will officers be able to enforce it when the law takes effect? John Paul Barajas took that question to leadership on the border and here in Bear County. And I think that this is going to end up being just a bullet point on somebody's campaign literature in the future. I don't think that any actual thought was given. Our job is not to like or dislike or agree or disagree with laws. Our job is to enforce uh, Texas laws. With Governor Abbott's signature, Texas law enforcement will soon have the authority to arrest people they suspect are in the U.S. illegally. And that's already leading to questions from law enforcement leaders. Stopping people based on how they look uh, could race an issue of uh, racial profiling. And that's something that uh, we will not uh, allow our officers to do. Chief Cesar Torres leads the police department in mission just west of McAllen. He says his officers will enforce a new law if it comes up, like someone being stopped for a separate offense. But Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar tells us his department is looking for clarification. And even then, we've got actual violent crimes occurring in our county every day, literally. Uh, I don't know that we want to put a whole lot of time into chasing people down because they look like they might be here illegally. Both the sheriff and police chief admit crossing into federal issues is uncharted territory. Part of the law does allow them to show paperwork showing that they've been uh, accepted under asylum. The average uh, law enforcement officer here, Texas peace officers, is not even going to know what they're looking at. I mean, we got to have a classroom instruction so we can set the, the boundaries. We asked the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement if the new laws would change training requirements. They sent a statement that reads in part, no determination has been made at this time as to additional training, if any, required to properly scrutinize federal immigration documentation, such as visas or permanent resident cards. Should new training be required, TCO will work with our federal partners, law enforcement agencies, and constituent groups to develop such training. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Lawmakers and doctors sounding the alarm over some chronic drug shortages, including life-saving cancer medications. The FDA's drug shortage list includes more than 15 cancer drugs. Several of those are used to treat lymphoma and leukemia, cancers that often affect children. Some experts are blaming the cancer drug shortages on the low cost of generic drugs because insurance companies often only pay for cheaper generic versions. The American Medical Association is now urging the U.S. government to consider manufacturing some drugs itself to alleviate some of the shortages. So when a toilet flushed in California, the water can end up in a lot of places. However, now California regulators have approved new rules to let water agencies recycle wastewater and put it right back into the pipes that carry drinking water to homes, schools, and businesses. It's a big step for a state that has struggled for decades to secure reliable sources of drinking water for its more than 39 million residents. California is the second state to approve statewide regulations for the direct use of recycled wastewater. Colorado approved similar regulations last year. Time check 538, about 52 degrees. Crimes involving teens went up this year in Bear County. Up next, why we take a look at what kind of crimes they were involved in. Outside with live cam, Mike was hinting at a change to our Christmas Day forecast. We'll find out what that means coming up right here on GMSA. Teens and crime, a trending headline recently in Bear County. About half a dozen crime headlines in the past three weeks have involved teenagers. The Bear County Juvenile Probation Department says the number of youth involved in repeat crimes is rare. However, probation officers are stepping up and monitoring and supervision of teens they consider to be high risk 
Those are teens that have a difficult home life, are runaways, not involved in extracurricular activities, and are involved in drugs. So Chief Probation Officer Jill Mata says the majority of the kids that enter the system are able to get the help they need to avoid future criminal problems, but there will be severe punishment for those who don't. There are always going to be a group of kids that are committing these offenses that are really horrible. And we know those children have to be removed from the community and there have to be consequences for that behavior. And they're pretty um, strong consequences that are needed in those cases. Now, according to department data, the number of violent referrals between January and October of this year went up 12 percent when compared to the same time frame last year. Nonviolent crime referrals went up more than 34 percent. Gun, drug and vehicle theft saw the most increases. Misdemeanor youth crimes went up nearly 13 percent. It's 543 and 52 degrees. Up next, we'll visit with our friends from the Animal Defense League about this little kitty that needs a home for the holidays. Well, a lot of times little kitties don't like TV studios. This is one of them, but it takes yeah. both of us. <laughs> Felicia's got a good grip and I'm rubbing the ear. So Felicia's here, who is this little one? This is Frankenstein. <laughs> She came in a couple months ago, <laughs> but she is finally ready for her forever home, and she is three months old. Her mama and her a few of her siblings have already been adopted, so Aww. she is excited to go to a new family. You have got the most beautiful golden eyes. Oh my She's goodness so gracious, pretty. just matches her coat so, so yeah. well. All right, what do you got going on over there? Well, we are super thankful because HEB is a fantastic partner of ours and they have, um, they are partnering with us for our Home for the Holidays Adoption Special from now until December 31st. So all of our uh, fees for all of our pets have been waived thanks to HEB. Really? Yeah, so puppies, kittens, adults, everybody. Everybody's free. Everyone is free right now oh, throughout wow. this uh, Home for the Holidays adoption special. So we're very, very thankful, like I said, to HEB um, for sponsoring this event. And hopefully we'll get a ton of pets into loving homes and ready for the holidays, ready for 2024. And of course, if you would still like to make a nice little donation, they would gladly yes. accept that. And of course, Definitely. don't forget about all the uh, the wish list and everything like that. Yeah. But yeah, so you don't cost anything, do you? And of course, no, they're all spayed, easy. neutered, you get all that. Exactly. So you're really gaining a lot by, yes. by doing this. So Definitely. Okay. And when you come out, you know, if you want to get, um, purchase a leash or um, some beds or anything, you know, to get you started, you can definitely do that. But it's just a, a great opportunity to come on out, Find your forever companion and, you know, have, spend the holidays with them. This spend... one's relaxed now because she yeah. started making biscuits. So <laughs> if you'd like more information crazy. on adopting, and again, everybody's free. You go out yeah. to Love the Road in Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center, Crossman the Zoo, or head over to their website, adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yeah, that kitty right there was purring all the entire time. I think she was enjoying her time with you, Mike. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys. Right now, traffic going kind of going uh, pretty good right now throughout the rest of the city. In other words, uh, slow going right now. I-35 at Topper Wine. It's kind of our biggest issue right now as we're looking at uh, some lingering effects from construction in this area. This is the southbound lanes of 35 that you're looking at right now on the northeast side. But traffic is getting through our area right now. So no major accidents, no major stalled vehicles or delays kind of let you know about. Uh, and you know what? We're going to keep on mentioning here I-10 eastbound at least one main lane is closed, so if you're headed out there to Seguin in this New Berlin area, that is definitely something that you're going to have to keep in mind. So if you are traveling, uh, maybe today, over the next couple days, just keep this in mind. So as I kind of move out of the screen here, um, we actually have seen an uptick in some gas prices here. This is just uh, updated numbers there from AAA's, uh, from the AAA's website here, and we're looking at some Texas numbers. So we're at 264. That jumped up about six cents from yesterday. Um, we're now average average equal with the state, uh, still obviously less than the uh, average gas price across the country, but you could see some of the numbers compared uh, to last year. So again, if you are headed out, uh, maybe you want to uh, fill up the tank uh, today or uh, maybe don't want to wait up, uh, wait on that too long. But again, right now, as far as our current traffic situation, 35 Topper Wine, kind of our biggest issue out there right now. Guys. I'm going to top off the tank today, RJ. Here we go. Have you filled up? You have a big drive today. Uh, it got some gas yesterday, and yeah, it wasn't bad. It was about mm -hmm. 250-ish, 260-ish, something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's so. what it was averaging yesterday. 258, I think, yesterday. Yeah. It jumped up a little bit. So. And you've got a green station wagon with wood paneling, like in the original vacation, <laughs> the, the you said? Truck, the family so. truckster. Of course yeah. you do. <laughs>
Uh, if you are heading out this morning, you may run into a little bit of some fog, maybe a little bit of mist around the area. Beautiful view yesterday of the sunset and the Tower of the Americas there with the background. I love how it's silhouetted in the background with the uh, the clouds and that little bit of a, a sunset. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, uh, you can see off in the distance, it's looking a little murky now, looking off to the sort of west, southwest. Uh, downtown would be right over in there. So yeah, we are starting to see visibilities drop a little bit. Bernie's now down to less than a half mile, mile and three quarters at New Braunfels. So both those areas have dropped down significantly. No report coming out of Hondo. Castroville has some fog and then hints of it around town. So it's starting to again thicken up in spots and this will be the situation going back and forth throughout the, uh, the course of the morning. Temperatures really won't move all that much. We're in the low 50s right now. Fluctuate maybe a degree, but with all this humidity out there, they're not going to be dropping down anymore. We'll still keep some of that fog around, maybe some mist throughout mid morning. Then we'll see some sunshine later on today, but a lot of clouds still hanging on in here and it's going to be warm again, 70. So we are going to be five, six, seven degrees above normal across the board all around the area. All right, here's the uh, computer model. So today, just basically most of the cloudy skies. Then we go into the overnight hours. We still have a lot of humidity and a couple little sprinkly showers around the area. And then we'll see a few more as the, the afternoon rolls on into tomorrow evening. And then somewhat better chance of rain overnight into Friday. And that's going to be the case throughout most of the day on Friday. A better chance of rain and rain chances are also going to be sticking around as we go into Saturday as well as Sunday. Humidity, which is high right now, continues to go up all the way into Saturday, Sunday. Then a front moves through here. Now look at that, dry air comes on in here. It's gonna get rid of any of the rain that's left over on Sunday. And also we are gonna have more sunshine around here as we go on into a Monday and Christmas day. So satellite picture, there's some of the clouds we have hanging around here right now. And if you are doing any traveling today out to the west, obviously there's that storm. That's the one we're gonna have to keep an eye on for the weekend. It's gonna be sort of meandering in the area. And then off uh, elsewhere around the country, no real problems at all today. So as far as any uh, flights today, not bad at all. Forecast goes like this today. We are going to make up to 70, 70 the next few days. Then we get even warmer going into the weekend and all that humidity around here mist and some uh, fog this morning and we'll have a few showers tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, not raining constantly, not everywhere, but just a few of those out there. Then that front comes through again. That's going to dry things out, get rid of the humidity for Christmas, as well as get rid of a lot of the clouds. I think Christmas is going to be a nice looking day A normal temperature 65 around here and then back down to the low 40s by Tuesday morning. OK, so just a little warm for the next couple of days, right? Wet. But then Christmas is going to look nice. It does. It looks very nice and then nice and chilly by uh, Tuesday morning. I'll have my Christmas sweater ready. Picture it now. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> I can too. 553 here, your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, seven, one, fireball six, daily four, one, six, nine, six, fireball two. Cash five, one, fifteen, twenty seven, thirty two, thirty five. Mega million, seventeen, twenty six, fifty, fifty eight, sixty one, mega ball, mega ball eleven, mega fire three. Good luck. Good morning. It is great to be with all of you here on a Wednesday. We are tracking the millions of Americans who are already on the move for the holiday. A lot of that early travel will have some issue in the air, but then I'll have the travel forecast for you. And we're also going to be showing you the money blown into the Windy City, helping holiday shoppers find unclaimed money and how you can do it, too, for you and your loved ones. Plus, we are feeling that Christmas spirit this morning, taking you to the most Christmassy town in the whole nation. You're going to have to tune in to see who claims that crown and so much more on GMA. Ahead of the next hour of GMSA, the Colorado Supreme Court has declared former President Trump ineligible for the White House under the 14th Amendment. How this decision could impact Trump's 2024 presidential campaign. Cases of RSV in children are up this holiday season. Coming up, the warning signs on what you could do to prevent a trip to the ER. Plus, if you're heading out on the roads for the holiday travel season, we'll tell you what you can expect to pay at the pumps, and it's pretty good news. And check out the roads with Transguide. We had some heavier traffic in that last shot, but 35 in New Braunfels looks pretty good as we approach the top of the hour. Let's go outside with live cam on a nice December 20th morning. Look at the smokestacks at the quarry and the Christmas tree lights over at Concord Plaza. 
Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, Rise and Shine. Yes, you heard correctly. It is Wednesday. December 20th. We are so close. I know a lot of people are kind of ready in holiday mode with uh, the kids out from school. We're talking about all of our different plans, who takes off when, and it's going to be kind of some not Christmas weather, Mike. No, not for the next few days. Um, it, it's chilly out there this morning just because of all the humidity. That's sort of that damp chill. But we're going to be back up into the 70 degree range again today, tomorrow, even warmer over the weekend. Christmas, though, is looking nice. The, okay. the forecast has changed uh, a bit by uh, uh, compared to yesterday, I should say, for Christmas. Once again, another look out there, and I love the, uh, the smokestacks always dressed up in red and green. And notice how visibility is not bad in this picture, but we do have a lot of fog around the area. Bernie at just a half mile visibility, mile and a half in New Braunfels. Randolph has now dropped down to just two and three quarters miles. So it is starting to thicken up. It is starting to kind of move into the metropolitan area. And with that fog, you can see some maybe some mist and some damp roads. So if you are uh, heading off to work this morning or hitting the highway this morning, just watch out for some of those damp roads. Temperatures are averaging right around low 50s, couple of upper 40s around here. And then we have all the humidity that came in overnight, and that's why we do have some of that fog around there. Mountain cedars on the high side, although it did come down from the previous day's reading and mold is slow, but I have a feeling that may be going up given the fact we have so much more moisture around here. Temperatures really aren't going to be going anywhere for the next couple of hours. We'll have some of the patchy fog, maybe a little mist around the area. Then we make it up into the mid 60s at noon, so already above the normal average high temperature. And like we were talking about, we do top off at 70 and then we'll start to see not only with the warm temperatures, a couple of scattered showers around the area through the weekend. But like I said, Christmas is looking better. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, how is it on the roads? Already? All right, Mike, yeah, things looking pretty good out there. If you are headed out right now across the city of San Antonio, take a look behind me. 281 at the quarry, we have traffic moving pretty good in that area, north and southbound. 281 at Loop 410, you can see that we have smooth sailing for the most part throughout the city. A couple of smaller things kind of popping up a little bit now. Uh, we do have a stalled vehicle being reported on the southbound lanes of 35 at Binz Engelman Road. So it's going to be kind of around the Bamsey area. And of course, this is always a very busy uh, intersection. We had some lingering construction here overnight, uh, but now we have this stalled vehicle. So uh, just keep this in mind if you're headed out. Again, Bamsey area, a lot of early risers uh, in this area to begin with. So it could get a little bit busier out there as we move along our six o'clock hour. Take you out to the far east side. Again, going to continue to kind of mention this. We have some emergency road work taking place. Uh, uh, there was already construction that was being planned here on a bridge on uh, the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Cibolo Creek. Uh, TxDOT has updated us to say that this is now going to be an ongoing construction issue here, some emergency road work. So at least one main lane there of the eastbound lanes has been shut down. You can see we're getting a little bit of a delay, but for anyone that's going to be headed out to Seguin area, maybe you are planning to uh, take a road trip out to Houston. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are going to be headed through this area there. This is something that we'll continue to monitor as we make our way through our Wednesday morning. But again, traffic in the uh, closer parts of the city looking pretty good right now. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. A call about a car crash has turned out to be much more. It appears a man found dead at that scene actually was the victim of a murder. Katrina Weber is live where the investigation is going on now at Public Safety Headquarters. So Katrina, what made police change their minds about this case? They told us that paramedics really are the ones who first noticed the discrepancy that the man who they thought had been hurt in the crash had bullet holes in his back. Now, they found him around 1.30 this morning on the ground uh, near Highway 151 and Callahan Road. Police say that the EMS crews initially thought that man had been hit by a car, but when they tried to perform CPS on him, they noticed the bullet holes and called for officers, and that man was pronounced dead at the scene. At this point, investigators don't know who shot him, and it seems that they don't have very many clues right now. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. With Governor Abbott's signature, Texas law enforcement will soon have the authority to arrest people they suspect are in the U.S. illegally. Now, law enforcement leaders have questions. Chief Cesar Torres leads the police department in mission just west of McAllen, and he says his officers will enforce the new law if it comes up, like someone being stopped for a separate offense, but won't cross the line of racial profiling. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar tells us 
His department is looking for clarification and even then would rather focus on violent crimes. Both the sheriff and police chief admit crossing into federal issue is uncharted territory. Part of the law does allow them to show paperwork showing that they've been uh, accepted under asylum. The average uh, law enforcement officer here, Texas Peace Officers, is not even going to know what they're looking at. I mean, we got to have a classroom instruction so we can set the, the boundaries. So we asked the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement if the new laws would change training requirements. They sent us a statement that reads in part, quote, no determination has been made at this time as to additional training, if any, required to properly scrutinize federal immigration documentation, such as visas or permanent resident cards, end quote. The new legislation goes into effect in March, but it could face legal challenges. We are now seeing what happened moments before police in Austin arrested Shane James Jr. He's accused of going on a shooting rampage and killing six people. Right now, James is in the Travis County Jail on a number of charges, including two counts of capital murder. Investigators say he killed his own parents at their home in East Bear County earlier this month, then drove to Austin and killed at least four more people. Austin police released body camera video. Take a look. I'm hit! I'm hit! APD says an Austin police detective was shot multiple times, but he did not have life threatening injuries. Here's a different angle from another officer's body camera. It picks up the moment after the detective was shot. You can see two officers taking cover behind a vehicle. Austin police say James was not hit by gunfire and left that scene in a stolen vehicle. Officers arrested him less than 20 minutes later after a short chase. Well, at 607, a lot of people may be hitting the roads this holiday season, visiting family and loved ones. But there is something you should know before you fill up your gas tank. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz looked for the cheapest gas and found a surprise. Jump at the pump. Jesse Munoz is fueling up for his holiday rounds, driving for Uber. Your uh, sleigh doesn't run on reindeer? I wish, I wish it did, ma'am. I really wish it did. Local gas prices have dropped 25 cents in the past month to an average now of 2.57 a gallon. That's about the same as last year. But get this, we've seen a 13 cent jump in just the past 24 hours. So I try to save all of my little coins when I can, but I'm not going to lie. I don't know what's going on right now, but gas prices are steadily raising and I wish they would go the opposite way. <laughs> it's just getting hard out here. Gas prices are seeing some volatility right now, but we did some checking. This is some of the cheapest in town, $2.25 a gallon at the Sam's Club off I-35. AAA tells us today's uptick is most likely due Due to increasing demand ahead of holiday travels. Also, oil prices have increased this week as oil tankers have had to reroute around violence in the Red Sea. AAA says if that continues, prices could rise more. Just in time for Ethan Cornish and 8.3 million of his fellow Texans to hit the road for the holidays. Hopefully it'll come down to 98 cents a gallon when I was in uh, high school. I'll be really happy then. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And if you're traveling by air, here's a look at FlightAware's Misery Travel Map. Not too many delays at the moment. You can see a lot of the activity happening on the West Coast and the East Coast. Really slow kind of in Texas, really the big hub out of Dallas and Houston, of course. We'll keep you updated throughout the week. If problems pop up, probably going to see a lot more action the next coming days. The UTSA Roadrunners waking up with a big bowl game win this morning. KSAT 12 Sports' Mary Rominger was there to see all the plays and the excitement. Hey guys, the emotions on the UTSA sideline as the game clock winded down certainly reflected how much this historic bowl game win meant to the Roadrunners. Happy with the way the guys play, man, and I'm just glad we were able to go get our first bowl win, man. I feel like, you know, this just kind of as the cherry on top. I mean, I feel like we're legendary. This is something that can't be re rewritten. They won two conference championships. They won a bowl. They were all also eligible. They were also uh, all here tonight. I mean, that's just, people don't understand what that does for a program. For anything nowadays, for somebody to finish what they started, doesn't happen very much. No regrets at all. You know, God has everything for a reason. Even we don't understand the reason at the time. So, uh, you know, coming back, I didn't think the season would go like that, of course. I didn't know spring would go like that. 
Uh, I didn't know I wouldn't be able to play in a bowl game that I wanted to come back to play in. But God has everything for a reason. He has something special in store for me, and I'm just following his lead. And uh, I'm just excited to find me a bowl champion. The game, of course, didn't look like we expected with quarterback Frank Harris out with a shoulder sprain. Senior safety Rashad Wisdom leaving with a broken arm, but it was one for the record books. In Frisco, Mary Rominger, KSAT 12 Sports. Back to you guys. All right, congratulations, UTSA. <laughs> right now, 610, 52 degrees. Users of Verizon can now get help from Apple's satellite connection if you're having car troubles. How it works, that's still ahead. A facility that treats people with substance use and mental health disorders seeing major changes due to low funding. Coming up next, find out why they're experiencing low funding and what those changes are. 52 degrees at 610 this morning. Some patchy fog in some parts of our viewing area. Really not in this beautiful shot you're seeing. Hey, it's going to be a little warm and damp over the next couple of days. But Mike says things looking quite nice just in time for Christmas.